Welcome to the Gospel Road. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4. It says, I therefore, prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain that the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine but human cunning by craftiness in the deceitful schemes rather speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is properly is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now, this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greed to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness therefore having put away falsehood let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil let the thief no longer steal but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need let no corrupt corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God for whom you were sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you Ephesians chapter 4. So it's talking about the new life and what you can be doing, what you need to be doing, how you can change things, the way you used to live and you don't want to be that. You know, we're all going through changes. We all want to be a better person. And how are you doing that? What are you doing to change things? What are you doing to build up one another I mean it, 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 it talk reading through this it's you know talking about being tender-hearted forgiving are you tender-hearted are you forgiving it says you know don't let the sun go down on your anger and don't go to bed at night angry 
at anyone, friends, spouse, family, don't go to bed angry. I know I fall into that a lot. <laughs> and I can honestly say that I'm there's nights that I probably don't go to sleep when I'm not angry. But that's not what we should be doing. We need to be finding ways to be able to forgive them. To work on that relationship. To build up one another in love. To help one another through those hard times. You know, learning of what it is to, you know, really make the person that you meet, that you know, a better person. What is it that you're doing that's going to be, that bring the best out of them? What are you doing with them that is going to cause them to be better? as we've talked before, is being the light in the, in the darkness, being the light of the world. So you're coming in and you're encouraging and you're, you know, not being self-centered. You're not putting yourself first to, to an extent. I mean, others, you know, helping them as in need um, and, and, and getting them through with love, speaking that truth in love. Which I thought was interesting, you know, truth. And it was funny because I'm taking a class right now. And um, this might be off a little bit, but I have to admit. Remember when I said that I kind of, I, I'll go to bed a little angry? Okay, something that's been bothering me. Um, in this class right now, probably a worse class to take right after the elections. Because <laughs> they call it history, but it's more of a political science class. Because we're talking um, foreign policy which I have my own opinions on that. We're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> but one of uh, the discussion questions I had to answer, I talked about common sense and using common sense to work with one another, which is what we need to do when you're dealing with foreign policy, dealing with other countries. You know, you, you're using, you know, the, the, the sense that you have, you know, that to understand and go, you know, that was kind of dumb. Probably shouldn't do that. Well, the instructor and then even one of the students, I thought that and my classmates made this comment that com everyone's common sense is different. <sighs> Which made me think on that. Common, everyone's common sense is different. Well, to me, growing up, and I guess I could be wrong, I've, I've been told that many a times, but I always thought common sense was common. This was like common knowledge. Like, we know that if I'm going to stick my hand in boiling hot water, it's going to hurt. Now, there might be someone who doesn't know that yet because they haven't done it yet. But once they do it, they're going to they're gonna know that it's common. That's why it's common sense, because it's something that we can share commonly and we're going to know. When I was talking to a friend of mine about this and they made the comment and they said uh, most people that say you know people having common sense how everyone's common sense is different they also are usually the ones that say truth is relative in other words the truth is not always true which is interesting because really to me if you're doing math and you're trying to balance your checkbook one plus one equals two one minus one equals zero. That's an absolute. That's the truth. You can't change that because if you change that, you might be bouncing some checks and you're not going to have the money that you think you have. Again, kind of common sense. I, again, could be wrong. Maybe I'm thinking way out of proportion here. But it's using that. It's using that truth of where things are. The truth of... This the truth for you can be. These are things that I've gone through. These are the ways that I can help build up someone else because of things that have happened in my life, and someone that you know that might be going through the same issues that you've dealt with, and you're able to help them. And then using your common sense to be able to say, you know, this is what happened, and using the compassion and using what you know to be able to relate with them. 
Not sure if that really made a lot of sense. But, again, proves that I'm not perfect. It proves that going to bed angry, yeah, I, I've done it. I try not. I really do. I really try not to. And I, I uh, remember I had an idea for a book that I haven't written yet, but it was Forgiveness is a Dish Best Served Hot. So you might not initially get over something that happens, but you should immediately forgive someone that they do something to you. Just like God forgives us. Now, we have our conscience being human. And with that, at times we have memories it's hard to forget. We try to let it go. Not always the easiest thing. But at least forgive them and don't let that be an obstacle, something that is going to trip you up. You know, speaking the truth in love, so we are to grow up in every way into him who is head into Christ. So, so speaking, the, but when you're giving the truth, when you're helping someone, you're talking to someone, you do it lovingly, you do it compassionately. You have tact in the way of using your words. Not all of us have that. And there's days I do not have that. <laughs> but we are trying to search that truth. We are trying to be better people, to treat one another better. You know, what is it? Tolerance and intolerance is the buzzword today. And a lot of times, re the reality is, you have to tolerate people. Because they're doing something, they're bummed, you're trying to cheer them up. And no matter how much you try and cheer them up, it just doesn't happen. So you got to tolerate that they're just being a bum. Oh, well, but I've been there. <laughs> I had an issue like that earlier today. It, you know, again, these are things, so we're, we're dealing with people. Tolerance is just dealing with people every day. It doesn't matter if it's on a belief level, just trying to help them, whatever that is. That's how we're able to show them who we are and show them the love that we have. You know, the Bible says they know that we are Christians by our love, how we're showing them by how we are giving that compassion as they need it. Ephesians chapter 4. Read it. Again, it's that personal relationship. It's that personal journey that you're having with God. That personal journey with Jesus Christ that we are having, that we're talking about. And that, you know, I'm just kind of opening up and saying, this is what it's telling me. And this is what I'm thinking. So, what is it that the Holy Spirit is sharing with you when you read through these scriptures? I mean, even for me, it's reading the scriptures. It gives a lot of, you know, stories and, and, and you know, allegories, you know, some history, things that you're able to look at and go, huh, kind of makes you think. But at the same time, we both might look at it and see something because we're going through different situations. Our circumstances are different in our relationship. So that's where we just are there to listen and to just pick up one another when we fall. Ephesians chapter 4. Thank you for listening to the Gospel. Have a great day. God bless.